So today I want to talk about something a little bit more positive compared to my last vlog video. I'm going to talk about passion. Hello everyone, this is Jay from The Game Mrs. UK and welcome back to my Let's Talk series where I talk about anything related to life, anything in general, as long as I can chat with you guys, movies, favourite video games or experience with video games which I might actually do one sort of like that but uh, this is kind of related to that this is going to be a video about passion now if you hadn't checked my other previous videos they are pretty heavy videos there's a bit of ranting, a bit of well let's just say it's, there's negativity but if you haven't watched it do not worry uh, this is going to be something a little bit more positive sort of at least I'm going to try and make it positive so I actually wanted to do this video idea to kind of talk about what you guys are passionate about what you like what you love doing and how you should embrace it and not really care about what people think obviously there are always going to be those group of people or maybe that one person in a group who says my god you like that oh you're such a geek you're such a nerd or you're such this like that's so stupid and then like the crowd kind of goes with them or whatever or laughs because it's like oh yeah it's stupid and they just kind of agree with it well you'd be surprised that maybe some people in those crowds might have the same interests as you but you know they're just kind of just going with everyone because oh yeah you know it's funny when it actually is not and you know unfortunately we live in the world where it is kind of like that and everyone's going to judge you know what you do but you should be passionate about whatever you're passionate about if that makes you happy then embrace it and i kind of just want to talk about uh some of the things that obviously i've been passionate about in the past things i've liked and things that i'm still passionate about i wonder what that could be could you guess looks up my gaming collection so when I was younger I was actually interested in trains a lot growing up you know like sometimes maybe boys my age might like uh, I don't know action figures or sometimes I hear like uh, kids are in football they're like collecting uh, stickers and stuff um, weren't really my thing I was never really a sports person it was more like I kind of played sports because my friends played sports but I didn't really care other than that I wouldn't really do much at school in my break I just kind of sit about not really doing much um, if I had you know if, if my friends were about I would kind of just talk about the different things that were going on one of those things was obviously video games um, and my first console was the Sega Mega Drive no I lie it's not my first console I believe my nan uh, think I can't remember my memory of this is very vague but all I remember is that we I guess we took her console she probably got it for like uh, her kids at the time or whatever or maybe she just got it for grand for the grandkids to play I don't know but it wasn't getting used um, so my parents got it for me you know they handed it over to me and I played it for a little bit I don't know what happened to her. I feel like they got rid of it or sold it or I don't know maybe my four-year-old self broke it I wasn't the most delicate of child like I said ever since I was a kid I was struggling with autism and that includes a bit of anger issues as well so yeah I unfortunately did not look after my games very well when I was a kid so I'm not quite sure what happened to it but all I remember is playing a game where I, all I can consider it being is like Mario in its simplest form but it wasn't Mario it was like a stick man literally in blocks and I'm pretty certain it's Altari because it looked like Altari graphics like a blocky stick man and it was literally four or five colors or how many colors Altari can run it wasn't many colors literally you're just on this green block like which is obviously like the platform I guess you're on one screen and you literally you plod along with like I don't know how many mineral frames and you know as you go further there'll be like an obstacle 
Right, there'll be a, a gap, there'll be like a block and then a gap and then another block and then you'll see, oh there's like a, a green crocodile coming out of that blue water with one colour blue by the way and you have to jump over it and you go into the next next screen. It was very minimal, I'm pretty certain it was Altara and it's the only game I remember playing. Didn't have it for very long, soon after I got the Sega Mega Drive. And what was I introduced to? Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was my first video game of all time and I loved it. Now of course when I played Sonic the Hedgehog 2 I was like oh my god I gotta play Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and I was immediately like huh this isn't as good as Sonic the Hedgehog 2. <laughs> That's what I thought um, and honestly I still think it today. Sonic 1 will always be Sonic 1. It's not a bad game but Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is, is just better. Um, but I never owned Sonic 1 for the longest time. Uh, even like when I tried to get a hold of it, I actually got a cartridge called the Sonic Compilation, which actually had Sonic 1, uh, Sonic 2, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. My god, when I played that, and this was before I even knew what Puyo Puyo was, I was like, I love this puzzle game. That was my introduction to puzzle games. I didn't, like, I, I think I knew about Tetris at the time, but I didn't play it. Um, I didn't have anything to play, I didn't have any Nintendo consoles, it was not allowed. I remember begging. My parents were like an N64 Game Boy, Game Boy Color. My friends were playing Pokemon at the time. I wanted to get in the Pokemon craze, couldn't. I had a few Pokemon cards, but I immediately lost interest because I, I don't know how to play the game. My friends used to joke and say, I don't think anyone knew how to play Pokemon, the trading card game. <laughs> like you just kind of got it because shinies and stuff and you know how fancy it looked and because you know you played the game and then I watched the anime and the, and the anime got me more into the games but I couldn't play the games for the longest time which is unfortunate um, but yeah that's how I got into games that's how I got into Silent the Hedgehog um, and that's how I got into Puyo Puyo and I just played the crap out of it I was terrible at it I mean I was young I was terrible at it. I got very frustrated but I kept going kept going but once I figured out how to do combos and stuff I loved it I loved it and it became like my favorite puzzle game, um, you know. And then I realized when I was, I was like, "Oh, it's based off of this actual puzzle game called Puyo Puyo." I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> that reminds me. I really want to get a Puyo Puyo Tetris. I bet that'd be a lot of fun, at least for me, anyways. So, and then of course, I eventually did get Sonic One. I actually borrowed Sonic One, the original, from my friend. And I eventually got that. Uh, and then I got Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles. And I remember going in this Sega store. I mean, I call it the Sega store, I can't remember what it was called, unfortunately it's long gone now, but it had pretty much all things that were Sega, I don't even know if it had any Nintendo stuff in it, but it had a Master System in there, it had a Sega Saturn, it had a Sega CD, it had a Fate 2, it's funny that I can remember this though, but I remember, and I also, one thing I definitely remember, was um, seeing, I believe, Sonic 3D, and I, but I think it was, I think it was either for... The Saturn, it was over the Saturn version, it might have been the Mega Drive version, it was the one with the weird 3D Sonic head, it was just like a black box, it says Sonic 3D and you've got like the, the Sonic face, the weird Sonic 3D face, it's hard to explain it, but it's just like a circle with his face popped out, uh, maybe I'll put like a box out to show what I mean, but that's what it looked like, um, but one of the things I noticed immediately was there was a game called Sonic 2, but well, I have Sonic 2, what's this, Master System, huh? can I still play it on my Mega Drive? And my, I think my parents are like, wait, you don't have that Master System, do you? Don't you have something else? Um, and I think we like asked the, the guy at the counter and it was like, oh, that's for the Master System. And I was like, wait, I, I don't have that, I have something else. If I have Sega Mega Drive there, that won't work. And I was like, no! Seeing the, the hang glider on the front of the cover of Sonic 2 Master System, I was like, I wanna play this, you know, it's Sonic 2, it, it's a different Sonic 2. And now that I play it now, it's nowhere near as good as the Mega Drive. But at the time, I was just like, with Sonic, I wanted everything Sonic. You know, I played Sonic 2, I, I, was, I was hooked, I wanted everything Sonic. And instead, I saw the Sonic and Knuckles cover, and I was like, wait, this is Mega Drive? Can I get this? And then I got it. And I was blown away by the whole double cartridge thing, like, like, like it would open. And of course, I put everything I put, you know, once I realised, you know, you put Sonic 3 in it, I was like, oh, this is so cool, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, like, oh, this red guy called Knuckles, because I didn't know what an echidna was or what, I was like, this is so cool, it's like, oh, he can fly and fly, like, I can play his tails and he can fly and stuff, it was really cool, I was blown back. 
quickly became my favourite Sonic game of all time. Uh, these 2D words anyway. And, um, you know, then I immediately tried Sonic 2. And I can't remember, I can't remember if, I, if I read the manual, because I think the manual said you could do this. Uh, I was also very experimental. I was like, oh, I can put Mega Drive games on top of it. So I tried Sonic 2, was blown back. I mean, I got Sonic 2. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Nice. So I did that. And I think at the time, I, I couldn't even beat Sonic 2, I don't think. There were a lot of games I didn't beat when I was a kid, to be fair. But get it. <laughs> I was like stumbled and I was like, what do I, what do I say? And uh, I tried Sonic 1, and this is the secret I missed. He came up with the, you know, the typical no way scream, playing the, playing the, uh, like, continue jingle from uh, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles. Um, and you just see the cat, you know, Sonic waving his finger and the other cat just being like, no way, no way. And I was like, oh, I didn't do anything. I did not know, years later, that there was a secret. You can play blue stages. Basically, infinite amount of blue stages from Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. I did not know that. I literally thought it was just that, you know, you can't play as Knuckles or Sonic 1. Because that's what my mentality was. I was like, oh hey, Knuckles, Sonic 2, Sonic 2, Sonic didn't work. And then I tried putting like other games in, I think, like Golden Axe. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting to happen. <laughs> Streets of Rage. <laughs> Sonic and Knuckles plus Streets of Rage, what would that be? Sonic. Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles in in the streets. I don't know. Streets of Streets of Knuckles. I don't know. <laughs> well, how would that work? But um, I, I was I was uh, I was disappointed. Um, but that's how I you know that's how I got into Sonic. And I eventually got a PlayStation One. And my first game was Crash Bandicoot. And even though it was hard, I loved it. And you know that got that got me even more into like three D platformers and stuff. Because I wanted to play Mario sixty four, can have an N sixty four and stuff. Um, and that's kind of like where my, my passion for gaming came in and I just, it was also a, a good way of, I had a bad day at school, it was also a way to cheer me up and kind of pull me away from the bad stuff that was happening in the real world. Um, that's why I was always, I was a very bratty kid, I remember being, I was a pretty bratty kid and my parents were like, you can't play games all the time, you know, you need to do your homework or, you know, you're only allowed to play it for a couple of hours and as I got older, I was allowed to play a little bit longer. Like I was able to stay up a bit longer and things like that. And up to a point, I think my parents were just like, like he's gonna keep playing games. So they just kind of let me play games most of the time. And even now, I know that they, like in their, in themselves, they're like, okay, as long as I'm happy. But even now, I think they worry that I play games just all the time. Like, and literally now I'm unemployed. I really don't do much. I don't. Um, so gaming has been with me. Obviously, if you couldn't tell, it's been my main passion over the years. Um, but like I said, I used to be interested in trains. I eventually stopped that. I used to be interested in the Pokemon cards. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! came out. And I watched the anime and I was like, Oh yeah, I want to do... I want to do this type of stuff. Dark Magician, Blue Eyes, that looked cool. And so, I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't I? And this is one of my old uh, boxes that I got. And I collected them for quite a while, I want to say till I was like 15 years old, and then I eventually stopped. Um, my parents for a long time refused to pay them, because like booster packs, like you didn't get much on booster packs, and they cost a lot, I think it was only like 7 cards or something. Um, so I actually just cleaned out this box uh, to, uh, you know, Monster Protector. Pretty cool. You c you can get like uh, like I think more official Yu-Gi-Oh ones if you wanted. Um, I don't even know what this deck is, but I thought I'd just show you guys some of the cards I've got here. I've got way more cards. I mean, I've got over 300, um, but unfortunately, like I've let some of them kind of get covered up in dust and cobwebs. So I'm a little worried that there might be some dead spiders in there and stuff. But I need to clean them out. But I've got so many, um, so I'm just going to give you like a sneak peek as to some of the stuff I've got. Maybe I can get something uh, that looks nice. Oh, here you go. Abyss Soldier looks nice. I think this is a war deck I got. I think this is the last deck I got. There you go. There's Abyss Soldier. So, I got quite a lot. It's like a shiny one. Prismatic one. Call of the Haunted. Anyone know about remember Call of the Haunted? I remember that from Bones. The Pumpkin King of Ghosts. Classic Dark Hole. There you go. So, yeah, I was really into it. And I'm not going to lie. 
like at times I sort of feel like I, I want to go back to it. Like I really do. Um, Magic Jammer. Another, I feel like, classic Yu-Gi-Oh card. I was always interested in the OG. I wasn't really interested in paths like that. And I think my favourite season was Duelist Kingdom. Um, and again, like, I watched the Pokemon anime. I was really into anime at the time. And then I wanted to watch Dragon Ball Z, but I wasn't allowed because my parents thought it was too violent. I got sneak peeks of things. I was able to watch it when I got older, but a lot of the time my parents saw it and they were like, this just looks too violent. Um, even though there wasn't any blood. At least, there was blood in certain dubs, but I think at the time, you know, they had to air it without blood sort of thing, because, you know, kids are watching and stuff. Um, but that got me into anime as I got older into my teens, and I would say I watched like Pokemon. And of course, Digimon. And I had the Digimon World game, and I fell in love with that when I got that game as well. And it's still my favourite Digimon game of all time, so I was really interested in Digimon. Never really interested in getting into cards. I think there were Digimon cards. Can't go wrong with Man Eater Bug, classic Man Eater Bug. I don't even know if you can even use these cards anymore. A lot, a lot of these cards that I have now, I think, are like banned from tournaments. Back in the day, you were able to wear, to, to use them. Like, you were able to use Exodia. And I think I remember that being restricted, but I think Mark told me it's not restricted anymore. I don't know. I don't keep it up. Uh, Pot of Greed. Everyone knows Pot of Greed. It's what Bloomin', Bloomin' Yugi would always use, you know. I got, I got... I use Pot of Greed, two, two more cards, you know, it's pretty much your draw the cards you need and I don't think you can use that anymore. Magician of Faith, uh, I mean my first deck I got was the Yugi starter deck and my best mate Leon got the Kaiba starter deck because he honestly, he really liked Blue Eyes over Dark Magician. So I had that, he had that, I think he might have got the Joey one as well which had Red Eyes and stuff. Um, there are like a few starter decks you could get. There, oh, I think he also had the Pegasus one because he really liked Relinquished as well and the Toon characters. So I think he got like Relinquished and Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, which was also really cool. But I only had the Yugi one because it's all my parents would get Sword of Ravine and Light. Look all this. <laughs> but yeah, this became again another big passion for me for a while. And I still, I mean, I go back and obviously like I still play Forbidden Memories every now and again. I still play Duels of Roses, uh, probably my favourite Yu-Gi-Oh game. You know, on and off I play Duel Links, which is the most kind of like recent ish Yu-Gi-Oh game. It's uh, the mobile game. Some people know about it, Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Links. And that's a really cool one, but um, I don't play it too often anymore. Um, and like I said, that became a big passion. But what stuck with me really is video games. Video games has always stuck with me, and I was lucky to find some friends, you know, that group of friends that are like, I like video games too. Yay! And then, you know, they liked watching anime and they liked Yu-Gi-Oh! And, you know, and I only, I, only, I only have a few friends in this world that I 100% trust, but I'm glad I have them. And I met them at school and I've kept in touch with them. And you know them as the Game Busters UK. That is Mark, Jamie, and Leon technically was part of the Game Busters UK. Are always a nice one. Here's like the, uh, the main card of the war deck. The Ocean Dragon. The Ocean Dragon Lord, Neo Deedless, if you can see that. It's really sunny today, so I haven't got my light on. Um, yeah, this is my water deck, so it's really cool. I've got that Legendary Ocean and Trap Hole. Sewagen, Gate Guardian. I don't actually have Gate Guardian, I don't think, but... But yeah, man, I was interested in a lot of stuff. I don't have my Bane Blade anymore, I don't think. But I did buy a Japanese Beyblade um, some time ago because I actually just wanted to buy one. I was just looking, I was like, you know what, I kind of just want to buy a Beyblade. It's been so long, I just wanted to collect it. Um, you know, just for collector's sake, not to actually uh, play it anymore. But I got into that. And now I kind of realized it was kind of cheesy. Like, I don't mind Yu-Gi-Oh as much, but I don't know, Beyblade I feel like is kind of cheesy. And I'm like, why was I into that? But, <laughs> but there you go. But there you go, that was another thing I was, you know, I was I was interested in and stuff. Because I couldn't get into Pokemon, I didn't have the Pokemon games. Um, you know, so I had to make up to, you know, for what I what I had and stuff. And I didn't really watch many movies, I didn't really watch too many TV shows. Every now and again it was mainly just like what my dad watched, a lot of Star Trek. It wasn't really my type of thing. And he used to watch a lot of football back in the day, he doesn't really watch football anymore. Um, but it's all sort of stuff I wasn't interested in. I'd always be playing my games most of the time. Uh, you know, obviously when I invite my friends, I'll be playing games. I'll be playing games like Crash Team Racing if we have multiplayer games. Crash Bash when I got that. 
Um, every now and again we might play Sonic 2 multiplayer with, with Leon, because Leon was the one who was interested in Sonic and stuff. I've been passionate with so many things. Gaming has always been my passion. And I always think that if you're unhappy, you need to find something that's happy. Whatever it is, whether you like TV shows, music, if you like to dance, if you like to sing, you know, wh whatever it is. If you like to draw, if you're an artist. My sister used to love drawing. And, you know, she's an animator, but she, she works in a school. But, like, her talent is there. She's kind of lost a bit of interest. But, you know, the different things that you're interested in when growing up, and, the, and one of the main things is drawing, and she's always been interested in drawing. She used to play games with me because I kind of made her, but she's not interested in games. She really isn't. I used to try and get her to play Columns and the Streets of Rage with me, and she would obviously always play um, the girl who I've completely forgotten. I'm trying to think. Um, Blaze. There you go. Yeah, she'd always play as Blaze. She's always liked the drawing, and that was her passion. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to talk about the passions that I've had and the passions that I have now and just kind of let you guys know really that embrace your passions really and ignore all the haters, ignore those people who are like oh you like this, you like that, you're too geeky if you like your comics or whatever like who cares, you don't want nothing to do with those people man embrace your pattern and if you are lucky like a lot of people who play games for a living, good bloody job mate. <laughs> if that's what you want, like you might just want to play games for a hobby, you might not want it to be a job, but if you make it as your career, your main focus and passion, and you do it and you know, you can live off of it and you're happy, then good bloody job. But you know, some people say as you get old you don't have time for it, but if you are just working and working and working, you're miserable and you're just paying the bills, you gotta find something, man. You gotta find that passion. You gotta find something to make things a little bit more bearable. You know, something to keep you going. A passion. And hands down, gaming has been my number one passion that I've stuck to over the years. I don't think I'll ever stop. And I'll be honest, I'm a little scared of if I, a little scared. I'm, I'm bleh. Let me speak. I'm kind of scared because I'm a little worried as to what will happen if I stop. Because I rely on it so much, um, you know. I, I still love playing games. Okay, I play a lot of old games, and not many new games nowadays really interest me as much. But the the passion is still there. I still go back to these games. You know, I still love them. I feel like if if you if you go back and play these games, then these developers have done really well. You know, I always go back and play games to cheer me up, or just to play them for fun, or just to challenge myself because I've played them to death. You know. And obviously people who speedrun games and things like that, you know, whatever your passion is, man, embrace it. That's pretty much what this story is all about. It's also, you know, me going going down memory lane, taking a trip down memory lane, just kind of talking about the things I've been interested in, how I got into things. Um, and I'm so glad that my parents bought me that Sega Mega Drive, I'm not going to lie. I'm so glad I was introduced to all these games. And even though I missed out on a lot of Nintendo stuff, like... I personally think I got the better better deal with the PlayStation because I love my PlayStation. I love the games on it. I really do. Um, there's a reason why it's my favourite console of all time. You know, it just amazing man and like I said, I'm, I don't think I'll ever stop playing games, so you know, the ideal thing would be I suppose to find a girl who will either who are either into gaming like me, or at least, you know, is fine with with me playing games and stuff, uh, you know, <laughs> I suppose as long as I don't, you know, stray from her attention. <laughs> but I've got plenty of time for that, guys. So that's pretty much it. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be. I'm actually, oh, I don't know, should be a bit stretched for time. But um, yeah, I just wanted to do something a little bit more positive. It's talking about passion, and I want to hear you guys about what you're most passionate about, whether it just be gaming. Um, or, or drawing or whatever it is just I want you to just let me know what you're interested in you know uh, if you have found that passion and if you haven't hopefully you find something that you're really passionate about that you're really happy about heck it could just be your your passion is just watching videos on YouTube you like watching funny stuff on YouTube whatever it is whatever makes you happy whatever you're passionate about um, I want to hear about it you know, I, I want us to discuss our passions and our interests because, like I say, 
it's a hard world out there. It can be. It really can be. And you got to find something to keep you going to make you happy, you know? That's how I see it anyway. So ignore the haters and embrace your passion. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like. Uh, if you got any more suggestions for any other type of videos, like I said I might do uh, more of a memory thing. I kind of mixed it in anyway. Um, like I said, I might do more uh, gaming memories or stuff like that. Uh, you know, talk about my different memories and stuff like that. But um, if you do have anything uh, that you would like me to maybe talk about or mention, it could be anything at all. As long as I had something to kind of talk about, you want my opinion on something, we'll make a discussion about it and let me know. Anyway, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.